Zipporah, where are you speaking? Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Good evening, good evening. It is a pleasure to uh, lead Prophetic Nights for part three in our series on honor, on honor. So uh, I will not be doing this alone. I am joined by our wonderful panel. And tonight uh, we are going to be talking about honoring the prophet and the church, honoring the prophet and the church. And so uh, before we jump in, I would like Prophetess Kasana, if you could open us up in prayer, please. Yes. Good evening, everyone. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. You are so good. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for taking care of us throughout the entire day, God. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind, Lord. Just thank you for just protecting us and our families, God. Thank you, Lord, for this moment right now on Prophetic Nights. Thank you for allowing us to have the right mindset, Lord, shifting, Lord, you know, into your presence, Lord, into a, uh, a mindset of understanding, Father, a mindset of honor, Lord to uh, want to seek and understand what is going on so that we can get things right for you, Lord, so that we can be in alignment and on one accord and we can easily do your will, just accomplish what you set us out to do individually and also as a group. Lord, bless the speaker, Lord, bless him, Lord, and just we anoint him, Lord. We anoint his heart, which is, his, of course, is his mind, you know, anoint his lips, Lord, the study, let it just be just so effective, Father, that it changes lives. Even the most person that just does not believe will have a, a fire lit in them, Lord, to want to just seek out and seek understanding, to want to just dig deeper and to find out who you are and what you are about and what you mean and what Jesus has done for us, Lord. And Lord, bless the panel, Father, bless us, Lord, help us to just be on one accord, Lord. And just to be open and anything, Lord, that is going to try to attack the ministry, anything that's going to try to attack the message, we bind and rebuke it. And we come into agreement with that in the mighty name of Jesus, because we are here to learn. We are here to make sure that we are, are learning and that we are spreading the gospel, which is your truth delivered straight from you. And so we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you so much. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we're asking all these things in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kasana, for Amen. taking us to the throne room. So again, uh, tonight we are going to be talking about honoring the prophet and uh, the church. We're going to be really diving into honoring uh, the prophet. And I may um, bring just uh, bring in honoring the church into my next lesson. We'll see where we are on time. Um, but I really want to just sit down with this topic of honoring uh, the prophet really tonight. Uh, and uh, hopefully if we get to it and the church. So first thing, like to recap, uh, guys, what stood out from last week? Um, what stood out to you guys from our session last week? Go ahead, go ahead, Cassandra. God is good. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, um, so honor in the household, that was so super important uh, for me and of course for everybody else, but for me, um, just making sure that we are honoring each other um, that we are honoring, you know, the men, you know, I, I have my young man who's 18, of course, and my young gentleman who's five, my two sons, but making sure that the husband and the wives are honoring each, each other. Um, I do know that you had talked about um, the, and I don't know what you called it, but it was a diagram of God, of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And you were talking about how they are, uh, we're not supposed to look at them as all the same. They are separate, but they are on one accord. Yes. And that stuck with me. I can't remember what the name of the diagram was, but to know God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but knowing that we are to be on one accord. And so we can liken that as well.
And so we can liken that into, you know, wanting to have a relationship with God, um, with Jesus and, you know, hearing the Holy Spirit. Um, and then I wanted to make sure I had this correct. Okay. Um, you had, let's see, honor, equality, and hum and humility. Yes. I'm on Bible study. So honor, equal, honor, equality, and humility are connected. I remember you saying they are connected. I had to write that down. You need to make sure you are honoring the person, the position as well, um, equally, right? But we all have our individual positions. And then you have to be hum you have to be humble, you know, in order for honor to, and this is my words, but in order for honor to for somebody to honor someone, in order for it to be activated. Because if I know that everybody has their own positions, whether you are in a church or you're in a workplace. Um, you know, in the body of the fivefold, if I try to treat you like equally, that's okay. But honor is going to allow everybody to come onto one accord, everybody mm -hmm. to be on one accord. And so that's going to activate the position and the honor that God has for you. People are going to honor you. People are going to honor your position and the things that, you, that God has called you to do. Because if you're not honoring that person, or a group of individuals, then that moves into unforgiveness. And then guess what? Like you're just, uh, and I want to say you are going to be a hot mess because nobody's going to in return honor you. Um, So that was really what stuck out to me. There were so many other things. You had talked about Peter, um, where uh, Peter honored Jesus so much. You sometimes have to watch, you know, the words that you're speaking, making sure that um, when Jesus was saying that he's going to be crucified, Peter was like, no, you're not going to be crucified. Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. You know, but Peter honored Jesus so much that he was willing to protect him at all costs, you know. And so when you honor people, yes, just making sure that we are honoring them, but we are not trying to overstep that and making sure that we're moving with the Holy Spirit. So all of that just comes into play. But we have to have that balance with each part of the Trinity. We have to have that balance and you have to have that balance with man in your household. How can you go out in your study? You mentioned, how can you go out in the world and minister when your home, own home is in turmoil? You have to get your home um, taken care of first. And so that comes with the man honoring God, um, honoring his wife, honoring the children. Um, you also talked about towards like the end of the um the message. I'm not trying to be so long, but towards the end of the message, how we can honor you know, our children in the home, how we can honor, you know, maybe the people that we have children with, you know, or the absent parent is not in the home, you know, your children's father or your children's mother, you know, that ex-wife, that ex-husband, whomever, how can you still honor them and have a, a decent relationship with them so that, you know, God is going to honor you, you know, so I think that was, was just, that was just really, really great, um, and that's pretty much what I had to say. But I was really stoked about that graph that you had. Mm -hmm. I love that graph. You know, they are separate, but they are one on one accord. Amen. Amen. What a solid summary. Yes. Yes. Honor, equality and humility work in tandem for uh, the glorification of God, the father through our Lord Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit. So honor principles revisited. Honor is an action word. Honor impacts how we experience God. Religion and tradition can kill honor. Honor is based on office and not opinion, position, not the person. His prominence always precedes position. And the road to dishonor is paved with familiarity, disbelief, and disrespect. Those were the core principles that every lesson is that's the foundation from which every lesson is built upon okay let's let's get into it okay what is a prophet a prophet is god's mouthpiece a prophet is the intermediary between god and man okay that is who the prophet is that is the role of a prophet okay now, as a result, it is important to honor the prophet because the prophet is speaking on behalf of God, speaking with the Holy Spirit downloads to him or to her, right? So as the mouthpiece, we are to give the prophet honor, okay? Now, 
why honoring man ain't easy. Honoring man and specifically the prophet is not easy. And there are some barriers as a result of sin and evil scheme and desires that have infiltrated prophets in the body of Christ that had sometimes give prophets a bad rap, right? And we see this in scripture with Balaam, okay? Now, I am not going to read all of Numbers 22 through 24, but I am going to summarize it, okay? So what happened with Balaam is that the, the tricky thing with Balaam, as it is today, is that Balaam was not a false prophet. Hear me. Balaam was not a false prophet. Balaam heard from the Lord, but Balaam used his influence on the people. Listen, listen. He used his influence on the people eventually for profit. OK, so and uh, again, I'm not going to read it all, but we see in Numbers 22 to 20, 24, Balaam was the prophet of God. OK. And there was a king, Balak. OK. And Balak wanted Balaam to curse the people of God for money. OK. And what happens here is similar to what we see when Jesus is tempted by Satan in the wilderness on his 40 day fast. The Bible says that Balaam, or I'm sorry, Balak takes Balaam up high. And it's basically like, man, I got the bread for you. I got what you need. I can pay you. And I just want to pay you to curse the people of God so that I can win. I can be victorious on them because this is in the context of the Israelite children uh, impeding on Balak's territory uh, because that was the promised land that God had given the children of Israel. Right. And so what happens is it's like three times, at least three, two or three times. Balaam is like, I can't curse who God has blessed. And so side note, uh, who, who God has blessed when, when you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field, you cannot be cursed when you're walking in God's blessing. Right. So Balaam hears from God. He has a history of doing great things from God. And on three times, Balak is like, I'm, uh, yeah, Balak is like, man, I'm, I'm ready to cash you out if you can curse the people of God, right? But Balaam says, like, I can't do it, right? And so here we go. What does Balaam do? He's like, hey, I can't speak directly. I can't curse them directly. But what I can do is influence them, use the Moabites to influence them, them being the children of God, to be disobedient so they do fall underneath a curse. So now they can be cursed and I can get my money, right? And so that happens. He uses the Moabites to influence the nation of Israel to worship the Canaanite gods and sleep um, and commit adultery with the Moabite women. And as a result of his influence on the children of Israel and their resulting disobedience, then they put themselves under a curse, right? So he found a way to get paid by influencing the children of Israel, the children of God, to be disobedient so that they fall underneath a curse, right? And so that is why honoring man is not easy because we have these prophets who have a history of hearing from God and doing God's work, but then they fall away for the love of money and then they influence God's people to do what is wrong so that they fall underneath the curse. Side note here, when we talk about curses and blessings and generational curses, here we go. I'm, I'm going to digress just for a little bit because I feel God wants me to, to really emphasize this. Removing ourselves from the generational curse is 
uh, or and or protecting ourselves with generational blessings is not just because we come to Jesus and we we pray the prayer of salvation. Amen. We do this through walking in obedience. Right. This is this is removing ourselves from the curse is not. Oh, I prayed the prayer of salvation and, and I'm just free from the curse. But you still walking in disobedience. Right. The Bible says in Proverbs that God detests the prayers of the man who disobeys the law. Right. So the Bible says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. God detests the prayers. You can be praying, God, remove me from this curse. But if you still fornicating, you still um, just living in sin. God is like your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. Right. God detests the prayers. He hates the prayers. That's what the Bible, not me, of the man who was not following the law, right? So Balaam found a way to influence the people of God so that he could get a win-win. I, now I can curse them because they're doing what's wrong and I can get paid. And we see this time and time again in our church culture where we have these leaders who we respect. They've heard from God. And then down the way, right, they fall under the influence of money and they use their godly influence uh, for uh, unfortunate gain. OK, and so I don't want to start this lesson off by just saying, yeah, we got to honor the prophet. Like, yes, there are there are barriers to doing this. OK, because we have our church history is littered with so many leaders who have abused their role and abused their position for their ill gain. OK, so I don't want to make it like this is something that's easy because it's not. However, God still requires us to do this, okay? And in Jude one eleven, pretty much in the New Testament, there are multiple places where Balaam's name lives in infamy, right? Infamy is when you are famous for doing something bad, okay? And so throughout the New Testament, or uh, pieces of it, the New Testament writers refer, re, I'm sorry, refer to Balaam and poor light, right? So honoring man ain't easy because we have a history of these leaders who have a uh, history of hearing from God, but then they go out and wild out and uh, influence the people for wrong. And that's why not many of you should be teachers because the weight of responsibility is heavy. Okay. So, but why is this important? Why is this important? Okay. I want to quote, I, be, I believe Prophet Kasana or someone else in a previous prophetic night uh, put up this quote. And I want to reemphasize it real quick. And it says, without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. Why is that important? Simply because God has chosen to work through people. That is God's plan. So we need to be able to trust one another and rely on one another, right? Going back to the Garden of Eden, the only thing that was not good was man to be alone. Everything is, is, is good, but loneliness is not good. And guess what? Loneliness is the only thing that existed in paradise that was not sin, but it was not good, right? We can have some things in our lives that exist that is not sin, but it's not necessarily good. And that's the one thing God pointed out. And guess what, y'all? Vicky Winans lied to y'all. Why am I he's like, why are you talking about Vicky Winans, right? Y'all remember Vicky Winans? Long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else, right? It was a hit song, right? But she lied. She lied because God said, you do need others, right? If we didn't need others, there would be no Eve. It would be Adam and Eve chilling. I'm, I'm sorry, just Adam 
and God and his triune presence. But think about this. Adam had unadulterated, unfiltered communion with God. But still, God said it is not good to be alone. We need people. And this is why this is why it's so important to not try to have our own individual relationships with the Lord. Right. To to just say, you know what? It's just me and Jesus in my prayer closet and I don't need to to go to church. I, I, I don't need to do whatever it you know I don't need to follow under leadership I got my own salvation and I'm just Rambo out here in the spirit I'm just doing what I want to do by myself that is not godly right and actually it's a form of rebellion and the bible says that rebellion is of witchcraft right and and so it is important for us to have an understanding that we need each other. We need the the body to uh, work uh, and cohesiveness, as Prophet Kassana alluded to, to be on one accord so that we can come against the enemy as a five finger fist. Mm -hmm. You come by yourself as a pinky and you getting knocked out because you isolated, right? You ain't got no church home. You ain't got no fellowship with believers. And uh, you wondering why you getting knocked upside the head because you are just a pawn on a chessboard. But you need the, the knight. You need, I don't even play chess, but you need the rook. You need the queen, the king. Uh, you need all the pieces alongside of you so that you are not isolated in this warfare uh, in this spiritual warfare. So going in. So here we go. I love this. So why honoring the prophet is important. Let's see what a widow can teach us about honor. Okay. This is referenced in 1 Kings 17, 7 through 24. And I am not going to read it. I want to read it so bad. But for sake of time, I'm going to paraphrase the story. Okay. So what happens here is it's this widow, right? And there's a famine in the land. And there's a prophet, Elijah, who actually foretold that it's not going to rain uh, and is due to the wickedness of Ahab, who was a wicked king who was being negatively influenced, speaking of influence, by his wife, uh, Jezze, Jezebel, right? And so what happens is, is that as a result of no rain, there's a famine and there's this widow in Zarephath, okay? And the widow, she has a son. Obviously, her husband is dead and she's like, hey, I got... I got like two Oreo cookies and I got some some canola oil and I'm just about to bake up my last meal and me and my son about to die. Right. So she is hopeless. Listen here, prophets. This lady is hopeless. She is she is just uh, just destined. Her mindset is destined to die. Right. Reason I said listen up here, prophets, is because. We are encountering people and will continue to encounter people and have encountered people we don't even know who are in a famine spiritually and their mindsets are destined to die. Right. And so Elijah comes across this widow and he's like, hey, right. I know you about to die. Right. You and your son, you, you just calling it quits. Right. It's a famine. And but first. I want you to bake me some cookies. I'm, I'm, it wasn't cookies. I'm being silly, right? But he's like, I want you to bake me something first. And then you and your son can eat. And then what's going to happen is that your oil and flour will not run out, right? And so then uh, she does that. And the oil and flour does, he says, the oil will, and flour will not run out 
until the Lord sends rain again, right? And so that happens. So it's dope. So it's like, man, later on, the widow's son dies, right? And the widow comes to the prophet, okay? I am going to read this part, okay? And I want to share my screen because I feel like this is really important. I don't want to even paraphrase this part. Okay. So verse 19, uh, verse 18, she said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? This lady is like, man, like I listened to you before, but now some more uh, misfortune has fell on uh, my house. And now I ain't got nothing. Remember, this is a, a, a woman in the Old Testament. She ain't got nothing, right? She ain't got no man. Now she ain't got no son. And what does Elijah do? Give me your son. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his head. Then he cried out to the Lord. Prophets, look at the care that the prophet had for this widow. Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I am staying with? By causing her son to die. Then he stretched himself out on the board, boy three times and cried aloud to the Lord. Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry. See, this is why the prophet is important, because sometimes the Lord may not hear your cry, but he'll hear the prophet's cry. OK, the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down the room into the house, gave him to his mother and said, look, your son is alive. How about this? Verse 24. The woman said to Elijah, I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. I know that you are a man of God and that the word from your mouth is the truth. Right. So what can we learn from this widow and how she honored the prophet? Winning lessons from the widow, right? Here we go. Her sacrifice led to abundance, right? Part of honor can be sacrificing and trusting the man or woman of God. And watch this. The man, in this case, Elijah, did not abandon her. He didn't say, oh, it's because your lack of faith that, that your son is dead. Like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I already didn't help you out once. He cared for her and her son. And he cried out to the Lord. Sometimes, as prophets, we can stand in the gap for whatever reason. Because she said, she said, did you kind of remind me of my sin? This woman has something going on. She has some sin or something going on and that my son is dead, but the prophet didn't condemn her. Uh, he, 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 he didn't work with the spirit of guilt and shame. He cried out to the Lord as an intermediary on her behalf. And, and as a result of her sacrifice, and she had equity with the prophet, right? She had already displayed her her obedience and her willingness to give from her last. And so he was on it with her and her son was healed. But her sacrifice initially led to her abundance, right? And guess what? Her destiny was tied to obedience. Remember how honor is an action word, right? Her destiny was tied to obedience. What if, what if she was like, nah, uh, God ain't tell me that. <laughs> she knew that this prophet was somewhere where she was not, right? She wasn't like, oh, God ain't tell me that. She was like, okay, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm do what the prophet tell me to do, right? And guess what? She trusted despite her doubt. Honor was an action word for her despite her doubt doubt. I know that there's many false prophets in the land. King Ahab was actually the king, right, over Israel. And sometimes the the prophet and, and, and the king 
right? They were supposed to be working in tandem, right? Like we saw that with, with David and uh, Nathaniel, right? But sometimes, as we've seen with David and Nathaniel, the king can fall off, right? When David sinned with Bathsheba and he's not on one accord with, with the prophet. And, and so, and instead of this widow uh, being negatively influenced by someone who's supposed to be a man of God and not acting right, and we can be negatively influenced by what we see, these big name pastors falling or these, these quote unquote, name brand prophets who fall into sin. And we can have the mindset like that's how all they that's how all of them are. You know, we can create a a parachute that covers and have a creative stereotype over the men of God. Right. But she didn't do that. She trusted despite her doubt. Right. And guess what, prophets? It took all of that for her to get to verse 24. She said, now I know that you were a man of God. Right. She just trusted and had equity. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't enough for her to see the continual uh, flower and oil that her obedience uh, led to. Another tragedy came and she doubted, but she still trusted. Right. So these are lessons that we learn from the widow. Right. Her sacrifice led to abundance. Her destiny was tied to obedience to the prophet. And she trusted despite her doubt. So here we go. Honor and authority. Honor and authority. This right here is one of my favorite, favorite passages. And um, I actually want to have... Mrs. Peyton, I want you to pull up Matthew 8, 5 through 13. I want you to read that. And we we're gonna we're gonna jump into it. As I give you time, Mrs. Peyton, I just want one person from the panel, just briefly, please, just share kind of what stands out to you so far in our study tonight to give Mrs. Peyton time to, to bring that up. What's standing out to me is the fact that we have to trust and we have to forgive and we have to allow God to just be God and trust his system and his order and who he wants to use. And I just think it has a lot to do with um, forgiveness and also just learning um, how to trust maybe, or choosing to trust on a daily basis um, and, for, and forgive. That's what I'm learning. Amen. Amen. Prophetess Peyton, you ready? All right, let's now, go. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I said to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to those who follow, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. So the centurion, to set this up, the centurion is a Roman general, okay? At this time, the Jews were looking for a king, right? Just like the old school kings, the Davids, the Ahab. Ahab was a wicked king, but right? So before there was a theocratic rule, that's how God moved, okay? But now Israel 
uh, years later, we're in the New Testament, right? And they are under occupation with the Roman government, okay? And the, the centurion is a soldier who is of the Roman government that the that represented like a foe, right? So this is not like, this, this ain't no Jew, this ain't no Israelite, right? He the ops, basically, right? He, he, he is occupying their territory and he is not liked by the Jews. He is, quote, he's not God's people, quote unquote, right? And so this centurion approaches Jesus about the healing of uh, his son, right? And this centurion uh, understands authority, right? Oh, I want to. I don't want to go to that yet. He understands authority. Hear me when I say this: a key to honor is recognizing that there are levels and authority in the spirit. There are levels, levels on levels, right? This centurion servant understood that from hit from what he do, right? He was like, oh, oh, game, no game. Like respect. Like I I, I know what it's like. Cause I know my men, I got people underneath me and they do what I tell them to do. And guess what? He recognized Jesus has authority over sickness. He 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 knew Jesus had a a, a a different type of authority in the spirit. This centurion was like, oh, I got authority in the physical realm, but I know you have authority in the spiritual. You on a level that I'm not at yet, right? Here we go. Just as there are levels and rank in the and the physical, we see this wherever we go. You know, there's there's bosses, there's vice president, there's and there there's levels. And, and any we see this in government, president, vice president, secretary of state, right? There's levels. We see this manifested in the physical. It, it, it's all a image of what is like in the spirit, right? Remember the one demon he said, I'm legion, and I got other demons underneath me, right? Like this levels to this. And let me tell you this, right? Just as there's levels and the physical is levels and the spiritual. And it let me tell you a very dangerous thing that has eroded honor in the church today. And that is the mindset. Just because I'm a Christian, I'm on the same level as you. There's no big eyes and little you. Oh, in the spirit. There are big eyes. Hear me when I say this. Now, we are we all have equal value. Don't get me wrong, right? We all have equal value in the spirit because it costs the blood of Jesus to save all of us. Amen. I don't want to get into an Easter message, you know, on Maudie Thursday, right? But the blood of Jesus saved all of us. So we all have equal value. But hear me when I say we ain't all got equal rank, right? There are some people that's putting in more work than you. There are some people that have authority more than you. That thought that, oh, I'm a Christian. I pray. I hear from God too. Guess what? That is pride masquerading uh, as lipstick on the pig. And the lipstick is called religion. The lipstick is called tradition right the 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 lipstick is that is that same feminist spirit right right i can do everything a man can do right right like we we have equal value but we got different roles baby we we got it's different rank right and this man understood that that there is levels in the spirit there is 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 levels yeah i can do some things but you got you got something that i don't got Right. And there is pride that is eroding honor because we don't esteem others higher than ourselves, as scripture calls us to, because we think we we think we got equal rank to that person. That's why we can just be talking while church is about to start. We do this with the Holy Spirit himself on Sunday morning. We just chilling. We got our latte from from uh 
from the outside. We just come in, just ain't got no honor for the spirit, ain't got no honor for the man of God because we we just chilling. We like a days ago, right? But I love this centurion. He knew that I ain't got it, right? Whew. We are all of equal value by the blood of Christ, but we do not have equal authority. There are some people in some areas who got it better than you, right? I'll tell y'all a quick story. My mom-in-law, um, you know, she she had a rough stretch this past weekend. And uh, I'm like, man, man, you know, I'm praying like I'm sacrificing. So I go, I, I'm just expecting God to do a move, right? And I lay hands and it was like on, it was on her upper thigh area, groin area. And uh, I lay hands on her. <laughs> And I prayed, ain't nothing happened, right? And she was like, she was like, uh, I see what you're doing. You just trying to get a feel for free. <laughs> and we was just cracking up, right? We was cracking up. But let me tell you something the spirit said to me. And I I, I texted, I texted, uh, I texted uh Apostle Peyton. I was like, man, I hate when I pray and I don't get results. Like it just, it just bugged me, right? And I felt the spirit. Uh, it was like the spirit is like, you ain't there yet. Right. There is more. There is one. I, that's not my gifting. Right. But there are some people who is th that's their natural gifting. Right. But then there are some people who have put in that work. And even though it's not their natural gifting, they can tap into healing in the moment. Right. Because I was humbled. Like God is like, hey, that that's that's not your you ain't there yet. Right. There are people who specialize in this and, and got that gifting or they've put in work to be able to tap in and places where you are not. If y'all don't remember anything else. There are some big eyes and little use in the spirit. And we need to humble ourselves to this so that we can receive what God has for for us from men and women in the body of Christ. We have to humble ourselves to the fact that we ain't got it like that. And it's not from your age. Your, and I, I don't mean like physical age. I've been, I'm talking about, I've been saved since so-and-so. It's, it's more people, it's some people who only been saved for two years and got more spiritual malice than you do in 30 years. Because they got saved and like Paul was like, right? And you've been saved and you just been crawling, right? It is levels to this. And God says that just like we see rank and authority in the physical, there is rank and authority in the spiritual. And you better recognize. And if you don't know, you're going to learn today that there is honor and authority that goes hand in hand. And we, we don't recognize authority. There's a, correla a correlative relationship. When our when our sense of authority and our respect for authority is low, our sense of honor is going to be low. But when we when we like the centurion, whoo, he said, I don't I'm not even worthy for you to step in my house. He was like, Jesus, any way you want to do it, you can do it. I heard you spit on one man. I heard you speak to one man. Uh, you know, you can cast it out but in, into pigs. But for me, I'm not even worthy for you to come in my house. If you just say one word, Jesus, your authority is like that. If you just say one, thank you, Jesus. If you just say one word, you ain't even got to come and step in my under my roof remember uh old boy uh in the old testament he was so mad that uh oh, man i can't think of his name but the prophet told him to go dip in in the river i believe in the river jordan uh the man with leprosy right and he was so mad he wouldn't humble himself he was like oh i'm not going to dip in that in that water uh, but I love the contrast because the centurion servant was not above humility to get his healing, right? Humility and honor, as Kasana said, uh, go hand in hand. And Kasana, 
uh, just put it in the chat. The story I was referring to in the in the Old Testament, it was the dirtiest river. And we got to humble ourselves to honor the prophet uh, so that we can get our dip into our destiny. Right. Somebody put that in the chat. We can dip in the destiny, but we got to get low. You can't dip standing up. Right. You can't dip standing up. You got to get low. You got to humble yourself and recognize it's authority that's going down. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now look at this. Mark 6, 6 versus Matthew 8, 5. Now, in both of these passages, in, in, in both of these passages, um, we see that Jesus is amazed. Right? I'm not going to read the passage from Mark 6. I, I talked about that. And a previous bubble, uh, previous prophetic night, but basically, uh, it was uh, Jesus' hometown people, and because of their lack of faith and honor, uh, Jesus couldn't move, right? So, let's look at the comparison between the hometown homies, these are people that Jesus grew up with in Nazareth, like they they knew Jesus from, from Youngstown, they knew Jesus from, from Cleveland, they knew Jesus from Dallas, right? They they knew him growing up, right? So, let's look at the comparison and contrast. With the hometown homies versus the out of town folk, the hometown homies knew him personally, right? But the out of town foe knew him spiritually. The hometown homies disregarded authority, right? They like, oh, this is just Jesus. We know him, and we don't even know who his daddy is. We we know Mary slept around. She trying to put it on the Holy Spirit, right? They just was just disrespectful. But the out of town foe understood spiritual authority. Right. The hometown homies had a great opportunity, but the out of town foe seized the window of opportunity. Right. The hometown homies, they they know Jesus. They had a great opportunity. Right. To get what they need. But because they allowed their familiarity to pave the road of, of disrespect that leads to dishonor, they couldn't get their destiny. Right. But the out of town foe, he he knew it was a window of opportunity. If you follow sports at all, you will hear them talking about teams having a specific window, a championship window of opportunity to, to seize the moment. Right. You got to seize it because that window can go shut. Right. Just like a window can open, it can shut. And when you honor the prophet, you can seize the moment. Right. You can seize the moment, okay? And that's what this out-of-town foe did, right? Here we go. Honor can allow you to reap more than what you have sown. Honor can allow you to reap more and you have some, okay? I want to read Matthew 10, 41. This is Jesus talking, okay? I'm going to actually read verse 40, right? Here we go. Here we go. It says, anyone who welcomes me, you, uh, you welcome me. And anyone who welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Here we go, verse 41. Y'all better get excited for this part. Anyone who whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. Why do I get excited that there's people that are that got spiritual gifts that I ain't got? Why do I get excited that there are other people that are levels above me? It's because I can tap in and I can reap. I, I can reap more than what I've sown just by honor. I want to give Camille a chance to speak. I'm sorry if uh, you had your hand raised and I didn't see it for a while. What's up, Camille? What's up, homie? Oh, my gosh. Yay. Okay. Um, I was, if you go, like, back to the last slide, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, just, I, really, I just had, like, this thought pop up in my mind. 
Uh, and when you talked about the out of town folk and the hometown homies, um, the difference between the two was that the people who were out of town, they um, they were more cautious about their time with Jesus. So their time was more valuable. It seemed like the people who knew him, it kind of it was kind of like not only did they take him for granted, but it wasn't like as urgent. It, they had no type of like. I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it it just kind of was like imploring me, like Camille, you know, you need to be more wise with your time and not just take things for granted or not, you know, take the things that I do for Christ for granted and, and be more like the out of town people. So that's what I wanted to share. Hey man, hey man, I uh I just looked in the in the chat. I'm sorry. Uh Annette, Annette Turner, uh, I want to give you space to to share. Can somebody unmute Annette or Annette, can you unmute your microphone? I want to give you space to share. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah, I was just talking about that, uh, that spiritual authority, just speaking the word mm -hmm. is so powerful. And one of my gifts is healing. And so speaking that word and being at a nursing home one day, and I prayed for someone. And initially, when I prayed for them, I knew in my heart and mind that just saying the name of Jesus, just believing and knowing that God is able to do anything, I knew it was going to happen. But I walked away and I spoke the word. And then I came back and immediately he said, my stomach stopped hurting. And mm. I was initially, I was like, oh. But then the word said, that's the authority. It's not you. It's the Jesus in you. You Amen. have authority to speak, declare, and decree it. And it was done. And so when God just continues to show you his power, he always gets the glory. We're just the vessel and the instrument. But realizing we have the authority in him. Amen. And we can, we can speak it. And I've even prayed over the phone for people. So speaking the word, I was in there presently. Physically. Yeah. But the authority in the name. Hallelujah. That's it. I'm excited now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You ain't even got to be there. You, you ain't even got to be there in person. Jesus will do it because he is dope like that. Y'all can put that in the chat. He dope like that. Right. Just say the word. Amen. Amen. Uh, so look, y'all, Matthew 10, 41. Honor can allow you to reap more than what you have sown. Remember, I said that some people have put in more work than you. But watch out. Watch this. You can tap in to some of their equity by simply honoring. Right. Right. Elijah put in more work than the widow at Zarephath, but she she reaped the reward of his work ethic. Right. There are people who are doing things, uh, making it with spiritual disciplines and things that like that, spending time with God that that maybe for whatever reason, you're not spending as much time. And I'm not trying to co compare how much time somebody spends with one another. I'm just saying that actually you can reap from their time and their sweat equity with the Lord by simply honoring them, right? We should be thirsty to honor. So I, I, I want to reap more. I don't know about y'all, but I want to reap more than what I've sown by esteeming others higher than myself, right? Right? I, I, I know Annette has more authority in spaces where I, I don't right now. In the name of Jesus, there there are people in this call who 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 have more authority than I have, and I ain't mad about it, right? Because I know that we are all in the body of Christ together. See, there is a a a misnomer with with honor, right? That if I honor somebody, that gotta mean that I'm you know I'm I'm just I'm not of equal value, right? Don't don't misplace, don't mistake, right? 
value, value or worth with rank. Here we go. Don't mix up worth with rank, right? We are all worth the same, which is the blood of Jesus. But we have different ranks in the spirit. And let me tell you this. People with true authority and, and, and I, I like to say bosses in the spirit, you 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 just know it by their fruit. You just know it. They ain't got to parade it around. That it's just this, it's just this humility, and it just reverberate right in the atmosphere. And you ain't got to be the loudest in the room. It's just people who tapped in into the spirit can call it out, and you ain't even said nothing. Uh, back in my rapping days, uh, in, in Dallas, we were in this marriage Sunday school class, right? And uh, at, back in the day, this is when I was in my 20s. So we, me and Christina, we were the youngest people in this uh, married Sunday school class. And we were surrounded by, you know, a bunch of different couples who were married longer than us. And this guy, he was like, dude, you are good. Just a, a good at rapping. And he, he was just a regular looking guy. And, you know, he just just regular degular. I saw him every Sunday. And he was like, like, he was like, man, I want to back you like he was willing to back me and i ain't think nothing of it and i was kind of letting that letting that go at that time the window of my rap life <laughs> was closing and i was just like i didn't really take it too seriously i was just like he was like no like i really want to support you and I, I never took advantage of it right uh it was mike and val never forget man later on I found out that Mike was a millionaire. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no, like this dude was so humble. He just, he drove a regular car, wore, he wasn't flexing or anything. And the whole time I had a millionaire in my back pocket willing to, to, to back me. He was like, man, like you need to go through that. And I just didn't, I just was like, you know, I didn't really take it serious. But the Lord reminded me of Mike and Val that there are millionaires. Yes, L'Oreal Turn said a missed opportunity. <laughs> we're, Mike, we're Mike now, right? There's a missed opportunity by not recognizing honor in the spirit. We can miss the opportunity through. I was familiar with Mike. I'm like, oh, him and Val in our Sunday school class. Like this dude balling out of control. Willing to, willing to, you know, I don't know, be my agent. I don't know. He was serious and I wasn't. Woo. The prophet can be serious, but if you ain't serious, you, you ain't going to get it. You are not going to get it. Right. Uh, what's that? The five heartbeats. I, I, uh, uh, you ain't going to got it because you can't get it. <laughs> I don't know. A little. I oh, don't know. I'm sorry. I'm being silly. Right. Uh, I think that was uh, five heartbeats, right? Or the temptations, one of them. I get them confused, right? Uh, but yeah, you ain't going to got it. You ain't going to get it. If you're not recognizing to honor the men and women of God, you're going to miss your opportunity. Huge takeaway. This is what the Lord gave me as I was preparing. And I just wanted to put this in there and we're going we gonna to come. We're going to come to a close on this. I'm going to tie in some of the honor in the church um, and, and to our next, into our next prophetic night in uh, week four. But here's, here's a huge takeaway. Don't allow your proximity to the prophet to prevent prosperity in a pathway to purpose. And it's crazy that phrase, pathway to purpose. I, you know, I prepared this a minute ago. And uh, L'Oreal, Prophet, Prophet L'Oreal was talking about that phrase, pathway to purpose. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. That's crazy. Don't allow your proximity to the prophet to prevent prosperity and a pathway to purpose. I understand that some people, they got it like that. And I ain't got it like that. And that's cool. 
at the same time, we can all win together when we are submitting and honoring one another in the body of Christ, that we can, we can reap in spaces and places where we have not sown as much when we are honoring the prophet. We can honor the prophet with our resources, right? Giving to, to the ministry, right? Supporting the work of God. We can honor the, the prophet and just simply doing what they suggest or like doing what they say, right? Again, that prepositional phrase, in the Lord, remember Ephesians 6, uh, children obey your parents in the Lord, that prepositional phrase applies to it. As long as the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, whoever is giving you instructions that line up with the word of God, right? Just because God didn't speak it to you don't mean that God doesn't have that for you. Because guess what? Just like the Lord heard Elijah's cry, right? I'm humble enough to like sometimes maybe whatever going on in the spirit, my, my prayers may not be getting through. But somebody else on my behalf interceding their prayers can be getting through. Y'all don't miss that in First Kings, right? Because you better believe that this woman who just lost her son, she was crying out, right? But the Bible says that the Lord heard Elijah's cry, right? But guess what? The woman was able to reap where she hadn't sown, just based off of Elijah's equity and the spirit. Because even though she was still unsure, she still had doubt, she still honored the prophet to the glory of God. So I want to end there. I want to give space to the panel uh, as we are at the 10 o'clock hour to just share some takeaways, uh, some things that stood out from uh, tonight. Can I say something? I, I'm like, I know everybody got something to say tonight, but I just feel like what is um, just resonating in my spirit is um, everybody has a, you know, a purpose, like you said, but there are people that you are going to come, that, that God has you in connection with on purpose for your purpose to be fulfilled. And if you don't know how to honor these connections and honor these divine relationships, and, and the Bible talks about the destiny helper, the different ones that God will place in your life to make your purpose come, you know, to, to basically push you into purpose, then it will never happen. And like I was telling someone yesterday, it's always two outcomes. And it, it was a movie out that really showed this. Madam Webb was like, I was thinking about that movie for days because it showed two outcomes. One outcome was a person being taken advantage of by Satan and not trusting, being open for attack, being open for um, to be killed, not thinking, not using wisdom. And then the other outcome was a step ahead of Satan. It, looking at all the connections, listening, being obedient. You know, when somebody say, stay here, I'm staying here. I'm not going over there. And if you don't listen and you take matters into your own hands and you don't accept the help of those destiny helpers, you're going to be destroyed. That purpose is never going to come to fruition. And so that's just within my rest. That's just what's in my spirit right now is be careful who you're listening to and who you're not listening to. Be careful who you're not honoring in your life. You know, my husband just got a prophetic word on Sunday. He right here. <laughs> and up, Antonio? <laughs> and, and I, this is my last thing that the prophetic word was tied to favor and increase from his connection. So the prophetic word was, you think you just knew somebody in the past. You think they, was, they just connected with you just because of happenstance. But that connection is tied to your favor today. That connection is tied to your increase today. So that's what God has just, just laid on my spirit. I can keep going, but I'm going to let somebody else talk. 
Amen. Amen. I, I want to hear from somebody else on the panel. What stood out tonight? Hey, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I definitely want to piggyback on what um, Mrs. Chern said. Uh, just honoring the people, um, like she said, with the connections that God places you is literally not for nothing. Like God is um, always working in order and he always go above and beyond what we may even think or imagine. Um, it, it's just it's just so profound because my connection to Apostle Peyton initially started with a business opportunity. And I literally was thinking like, oh, OK, you know, he just want to help me, you know, get back in to the business opportunity. But lo and behold, God heard my silent prayers and things that I needed to do. And God knew that me connecting myself with not just him with the business aspect, but also in ministry. And because uh, God had showed him who I was and where he ne God needed me to be, he used Apostle Peyton to, to help me um, prepare for my purpose. Um, as I stated, even in my uh, prayer this morning, you know, God really do uh, hear our prayers. And um, I was in a space where God had to pull me out of that because I was going in a wrong direction. And it wasn't that I was completely wrong. It was just not what God ordained for my life. And it is so important that we really honor the connections. I honor every single last person that is on this panel and everyone who has um, a prophetic gift in it, who truly hears from God, because doing so really does bless you. And it gives you so much grace that I can't even say that I obtained, you know, just all by myself. And I just really thank and praise God because, you know, he just really moves in a way that we don't even truly understand. He he goes above and beyond. And I'm just so very grateful for the ability to truly um, prepare for what God has me for. Uh, like Mrs. Chern also said, when you going down another path, another road, like it's that you really do miss opportunities. And I was on the brink of missing my opportunity, missing the opportunity that God wanted me to have because I wasn't listening. I was listening to all these other voices when I should have just been listening to God. So God had to connect me with someone that truly hears from God and that truly cares about his his sister and his brothers in Christ so that I can be um, put on the path that God needs you to. So um, this is just profound. There's so much more that I can definitely say with regards to honor, but I'll just leave it there. Cool. I want to uh, I want to say one last thing and then I want to have Mr. Ringo close this out in prayer. OK, I want to say one last thing. I want to mention a scripture here that that came to my mind as as you were uh, speaking, Maria. And it is first Thessalonians 518 through 20. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Watch this one. Do not stifle the spirit. Do not extinguish the spirit. Some versions say do not quench the spirit. Right. I like the amplified. It says do not quench. And then it, it amplifies. It says subdue or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Watch verse 20 here. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all and hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. When we treat the influence of the prophet with contempt, we stifle the spirit. We quench the spirit. The spirit wants to move so bad, but he's like, I can't move because you ain't honoring the prophet. You you taking what the prophet says as 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 light work, right? As somebody previously said, I think Camille said, you're not treating it with a sense of urgency. You so familiar with it that that uh, uh, the 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 quote says familiar familiarity breeds contempt. 
right? And our marriages, we can just we can just have contempt because we so familiar. We not respecting the call that's on that woman's life. We not respecting the call that's on that man's life because we just so familiar. I'm hitting up 15 years of marriage in July and I pray that I don't get too familiar with my being because that is the sister that uh, the, she has a calling of teaching on her life. I can't afford to get too familiar with her just because we've been down for 18 years and married for 15. I don't care how long the anointing on her life is uh, fresher today than it was 18 years ago. Because if I get too familiar with her, it's going to breed contempt and I'm, I'm going to quench the spirit. Amen. By, by just despising what she might be trying to tell me. Right. So, OK. All right. I'm 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 a I'm a let I'm I'm a I'm a in I'm a in. Uh, uh, Brother Ringo, can you uh, close us out in prayer? Um, I want to thank uh, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank God for everything he has done for me in my life, my family and everybody on this panel. And everybody in the world, period. Um, I also want to thank uh, Lord Jesus Christ that uh, for putting me 11 years ago uh, in the business that was presented to me by Mr. Payton. But I always, I always knew it was something different about Mr. Payton, but I also knew. I was put, I was put in front of him for a reason, but I couldn't figure it out 11 years ago. And as time went on, I, I got closer and closer um, to Mr. Payton. And I want to thank, I want to thank God for that because he, he put me in a arena. I don't want to say arena, but he put me in touch with other people that are God fears. And my mom always said, who you hang around with is who you become or, or who you hang around with is how you act. So by me constantly searching for God, and some, a lot of things I couldn't figure out and I didn't know, but I knew it was the truth. And as I sit, as I sit um, and just absorb everything, that's why I don't say that much. I just sit, I'm like a sponge. I'm, just, I'm absorbing. I had a Bible in front of me. When somebody said a verse, I immediately go to it, highlight it, look at it, put a note. So as the time that I spent with this outreach program and then spending time with some of the leaders, it, I, I gain more wisdom. Or I gain more... Um, I, I look at the spiritual realm different now than I did before. And I want to learn more. And the only way you can learn is, is, is to read it and be and put yourself in that environment. And, and uh, that's why I'm glad I'm here and I'm, I'm staying here. Um, everybody has their own pace, you know, that how they learn things. The key thing is what you learn and how you apply it. Amen. So I got off track a little bit, but I'm going to go back to praying. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah it's all good. It's all good. Um, Lord, I want to thank you for um, my grandmother's 96 years old, and she doesn't have anything wrong with her. And the, the business allowed me to spend time with her. And every day I learn something new. And I want to thank you, Lord, for giving me this opportunity to provide for her and do whatever she wants or just to be her private Uber. Um, a lot of people don't have that access to their, grand, great, to their grandmother. Um, so I'm grateful for that. And every day I thank you when I wake up that you give me this opportunity in this time because you never know when it's, you never know when you, when you would lose them. And I'm preparing myself because I know there's gonna come a time where 
she's not going to be here. So I was stressing out about that and, and worrying. And then I just asked God, I just released it to him. And he's, he told me he has my back. Amen. So I, I thank you, Lord, for just being there for me and giving me the understanding um, to be patient. Some things you don't get it the first time. You may get it. You may have to get it 10, 12 times as long as you get it. So I, um, one of the reasons why I stay with this outreach program is because it's real. It's true. It's 100%. It's not fluff. Um, nobody has egos. Um, and I just take every day and all the um, trainings that we have, I, I tape them, I record them, I, I sit back, and then I go back and take notes on them. But, um, Lord, I want you to, uh, all the sick people, heal them, put your hand over them. Lord, people who don't have family members, who are lost, um, put put us in front of them or put put them in front of people who can guide them and lead them in the right direction. Um, Lord, thank you for my beautiful wife. Uh, she's, she, she, <laughs> I call her a comedian because she say things in a funny way, but when you think about it, it's true. Um, thank you for my son my family thank you for everybody that's on this this panel that's in impact outreach um you everybody has a, a piece that they play in my in my life uh thank you lord amen amen amen, amen. amen. So, god bless everybody amen. yes god bless everyone have a good